Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, my friend Greg and I will review the legendary Leica 3F, which happens to be one of the least expensive ways to get into the Leica camera system, but at the same time what you get is one of the most compact, solid and beautiful cameras ever created by Leica. We took a closer look at this legendary camera during a photo walk in Würzburg shooting some Ilford FP4 Plus and Agva Precision 100. Let's get started. The Leica 3F was first introduced in 1950 and is considered the highest evolution of Oscar Barnack's legendary screw mount camera design that all dates back to the very first prototype um, from the year of 1913. And in the course of the next 37 years in between, this camera design was iterated upon and improved upon um, with each and every iteration and that all led to the 3F as it's kind of the pinnacle of this camera design. The camera was built between 1950 and 1957, and in this period over 184,000 cameras have been produced, and what I found striking is only 5,000 of them in Canada, the rest in Wetzlar. Um, and if you look at these production numbers, that is an indication um, already. Um, it, it was actually like as most popular screw mount camera ever produced. And what I personally also found interesting is that it was on back order for the first couple of years, despite its relatively high price tag of um, in today's US dollars, over 3,500 US dollars, um, or even a bit more if you really correct it for inflation. So quite a hefty price tag, but at the end of the day, it was the same price as its predecessor. And what's also important to point out, starting in 1954, it was sold simultaneously with the Leica M3, which was much more expensive and of course considered more advanced at the same time. But at the same time, many um, photographers still had the screw mount lens system and were not ready to upgrade to a completely different bayonet system. The F in the name stands for flash synchronization, which was quite a big deal in 1950. In the past, it was common to have an external synchronizer, which basically went between your cable release shutter button and the flash unit and would ensure that the flash would fire off in exactly the right moment to ensure an even um, focal plane shutter exposure. Um, now it was suddenly possible to, simple, to simply set the automatic synchronization dial to the correct number. So you basically had a table that would um, get together your correct shutter speed to your flash bulb and then just um, set that to get perfect flash synchronization. So that was quite a big deal. What is also important to point out is that starting with the production number 615,000, 
um, we see the introduction of a new shutter, which became apparent in the introduction of red dials. So overall, what we have in this camera are three different versions, which go by the street names, black dial or BD abbreviated, then red dial um, or RD, and then the later versions, which added a self timer, which is then abbreviated ST. And roughly speaking, we have the first black dial version between 1950 and 1952 then the second version with the red dials between 1952 and 53. And then last but not least, we have self timer added in the productions ranging from 1954 to 57. In general, the shutter speeds range from one second, one second to one, one thousandth of a second, plus a key and a bulb mode. And what I find particularly important is to point out that you have a dedicated um, shutter speed dial for the slower speeds um, that ranges from 1 25th of a second, in our case here, to one second. So if you would want to access the slower or longer speeds, like one second, what you would have to do is set the faster speed dial to 25 or 25th, and then um, the start with the same 25 and the slower speed dial and start turning it to the slower speed. That's important to point out here. Um, what is also important is that you have two separate windows for the magnified range finder and for the viewfinder, which is optimized for 50, um, 50 millimeter lenses. So what you would usually do is focus first using the range finder patch, which by the way has a 1.5 times magnification and then move over to the second window in order to um, do your final composition and take the shot. If you have an external viewfinder as we are using it here because we used occasionally um, a 35 millimeter lens and we had to use a lens hood um, because of the, the sun coming in, um, which kind of blocked part of the viewfinder. So we prefer to use the viewfinder that we put on onto the accessory shoe here. Then of course you're moving back and forth between the magnification, um, the, the rangefinder and the viewfinder on top of the camera, which works really well by the way. The design of the Leica 3F goes back to the very first Leica cameras that were constructed around the size of a 35mm film spool. Um, so if you take a closer look at the film housing and the rounded corners and uh, the dials and how they are placed along the silhouette of the camera body, you can see um, it all embraces that 35mm film spool and how the film runs through the camera. So there's not much room for anything else. It's the most compact form factor, factor and it really follows this whole Bauhaus creator of form follows function. Um, so I personally consider that a beautiful, perfect, compact design for a camera. And at the same time, once you pick it up, you realize it's built like a tank. This is really solid quality. And given the fact that this camera is over 60 years old and still runs smoothly, this is really impressive. Um, and Greg told me all it basically needs is some attention and the occasional CLA, so a clean lubrication and adjustment from time to time.
Leica 3F works perfectly with all screw mount lenses out there. And what is important to note, of course, is that the viewfinder is optimized for 50 millimeter lenses. So once you attach something else, it makes sense to have an external finder that you put into the accessory shoe, similar to what Greg and I did when we shot our 35 millimeter lens. But when the 3F was introduced, when it hit the market, it instantly provided access to a vast amount of very light and high quality lenses that had been released in the last couple of decades. And um, I just wanted to point out some important lenses that were out there and that were available. Um, so for instance, and I have to read here, the 28mm Hector lens uh, that had an aperture of um, 6.3, then two LMR lenses, the 35mm 3.5 and the um, 50mm standard lens, which also had an aperture of 3.5, then the very fast Sumar lens with an aperture of f2, um, then the Hector lens, uh, a 73 millimeter f 1.9 lens, very, very interesting. Then the Tumbar um, 90 millimeter f 2.2, which has been recently reintroduced by Leica and has a very special characteristic look. And then the 135 millimeter um, f 4.5 Hector lens. And last but not least, and that one is particularly interesting, a Tulit um, 200 millimeter f 4.5 which required a special SLR box called the um, Visoflex. And last but not least, I wanted to mention that this screw mount is also called LTM, so like a thread mount sometimes, or um, the M39 mount. So if you go on eBay and look for screw mount lenses, they go by the name of M39 sometimes or LTM. These are all lenses that can be attached to this kind of um, Leica 3F camera. The Leica 3F was briefly sold simultaneously with the Leica M3, which was first introduced in 1954. So between 1954 and 1957, these two cameras were sold simultaneously. And of course, the Leica M was considered a huge innovation and real revolution at the time because it integrated the two separate windows of a rangefinder and a viewfinder into one viewfinder with a rangefinder patch. But what I found interesting when I researched the 3F is Ken Rockwell's review where he keeps pointing, pointing to the advantages of the 3F over the M camera. He, he's basically saying the um, 3F is more compact, lighter, and has a quieter shutter than any Leica M camera. <laughs> and in addition to that, so that's actually true, if you put them next to each other, you see because of that form photos function design of the 3F, that embraces the film spool so much and because you have the two separate windows and don't need the complex um, structure that you need in order to integrate the rangefinder patch into the viewfinder as with the Leica M cameras, you have a much more compact form factor. Um, and what I also found interesting is that because of the magnification of the rangefinder of 1.5 times that you get in the 3F, plus a longer effective rangefinder base length, it is very, very easy and precise to focus. And in some cases, if you compare it to later Leica M cameras, much better than with any Leica M. So if you are about focus and focusing correctly, uh, Ken Rockwell basically keeps pointing out, this is a very, this gets you very sharp images and it's very precise to focus. Um, I found it worth pointing out. And last but not least, of course, the viewfinder is very bright, bright because there was no reason to dim it as we had with later M cameras that needed to dim it in order to have additional frame lines in there and to have um, 
to, to ensure that the rangefinder patch would be visible even if you're shooting against the sun or against the light to some extent. So you get a completely bright viewfinder and you get a very nice magnified rangefinder that makes it easy and precise to focus the 3F. And to be honest, my personal assessment, when we walked um, through the vineyards um, around Würzburg and talked to each other, Greg and I, um, I looked at him at some point and basically asked, come on, um, why was there any camera created after the 3F? This is such a perfect tool. And if you don't mind the limitations of a 50 millimeter lens or a strongly focused viewfinder for, or optimized viewfinder for 55, 50 millimeter lenses, and if you don't mind a minimum focusing distance of one meter, then this is the perfect tool for you. And all you really need, especially if you continue to work in the faster shutter speeds and you don't need to use the additional dial for slower speeds, then this tool is just perfect. It offers everything you need and might wish for. And you basically get used to this um, focusing and then composing in a different window mode. And I really, really liked and enjoyed using this camera. So to sum it up, Greg and I really enjoyed shooting this wonderful camera. Um, despite being over 60 years old, it still runs smoothly and feels so right in your hands. What you get is a timeless design. You get an incredible amount of craftsmanship that you can feel with every turn of the dials. Um, and last but not least, um, you get access to Leica quality, Leica lenses, and all you need is an occasional CLA and you have a perfect tool in your hands. Especially as a 50 millimeter shooter, I would not need anything else for my kind of slow street photography. Only in case you want to shoot moving subjects, faster moving subject, it makes sense to go for an SLR or a Leica M instead, because of course, then an integration of a rangefinder and viewfinder may make a lot of sense. But if you can take your time as we did on our day here to focus and then compose and then to check focus and things like that and go back and forth between separate windows for that, perfectly fine and it's actually a joy to use this camera so um, i hope you enjoyed this review of the leica 3f if you did please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe to our channel and um, as always we really appreciate your comments in the comment section below thanks for watching we hope to see you soon bye